Hi, welcome to the first video in a series where we'll be going over a piece entitled Sojourn by Mitchell Peters. Now, while we'll be looking at some of the technical or musical considerations specific to this piece that someone might encounter when they're first learning it, these are concepts that you can apply to any member piece when you first start learning music or even when you're working on pieces that you've already had in your hands for a while. This is meant to be the video for band directors and percussion instructors who are looking for instructional content, but also very easily they can forward this on to their students who might be working on developing their musicianship. My name is Hoi Pan, thanks for watching. Let's get started. So for this opening section, there are technical and musical considerations. We're gonna start with the musical expressive performance considerations because that's actually the hardest part. I'd say 80% of the students that I see come in who play this piece, they might play it something like this. Is that you? That's probably how I would have played it early on. And that's what I would describe as being very straight and very flat. There isn't very much expression or inflection in the music. And that inflection and style, that's what makes the music feel like music. It would be the equivalent of me saying, hello everyone, my name is Hui, welcome to this video. Two seconds in, you'd say, that's very flat, next video. It's all about the style, you wanna make this as musically appropriate stylistically interesting as possible. Squeeze every drop of music that you can out of this tune, okay? This piece is marked at 144, so that's about here. You're welcome to play it a little bit slower, a little bit faster, whatever you can do to play it well. Um, too fast, sometimes it's hard for people to process the information. Too slow, you might not have that one feel. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's dance-like, it's got a three, four lilt to it. Uh, very similar to a waltz. That 3-4 lilt is what we're trying to create in this opening section. So the way you do that is you emphasize the bass notes and you ease up on beats two and three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. In our left hands, we would have this. Strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak. As opposed to. So in our left hand, we're gonna to try to maintain that three, four lilt. We're in this A flat natural minor feeling, but in the right hand, we have this melody. This uh, pentatonic melody that's starting on E flat up here. So the right hand we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. That's the first half. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. We're also trying to maintain that three, four feeling by putting a little emphasis on the downbeat. But there's something more important that's going on in the right hand. We have to decide what kind of musical phrase we want to create. What we're trying to go beyond is just having a flat contour, no crescendos or decrescendos, but we want to create some of those hills and valleys so we could go. That might be up and down for two. But that can get a little seasick because you're crescendoing, decrescendoing it all over the place. What if we went up for two and down for two? Ah, so now we have two phrases of four. It's like up for two, down for two, up for two, and down for two. And then what if we take it a step further? We could go up for four and then down for four. Crescendoing. Fourth measure here. Into the next section, right? So in that case, we've got a longer eight bar melody. The arrival point is in the fifth measure. 
and we start to create this arc shape in the melody. Going beyond the notes as mature musicians, we're trying to create these longer phrases. I'm speaking right now, and this is a longer lesson. I'm trying to connect the thoughts and the ideas that we're saying, as opposed to saying the words in separate or disjointed ideas. That's hard for the listener to absorb and kind of just get lost in the music. So we're trying to create these longer phrases, and we do that by shaping and using dynamics. So one thing to work on is to make sure that the peak of the phrase, the arrival of the phrase is very clear. We're going second bar, third bar, fourth bar, right there on the fifth measure. That's the arrival point. How do we make that the peak of the phrase without accenting the note? So like, for example, this is too much. Like, hey, that's the arrival point. While that's the loudest note, it doesn't make musical sense. It still has to have a smooth musical contour to it. The shape and the pacing is what we're working on for this section. Okay, so that's the style that we're going for. We're trying to create the three four lilt. Another thing we can consider is the balance between the left hand accompaniment and the right hand melody. So your left hand in the opening two bars, you're establishing the style, the feel, the pulse. Once the right hand comes in, you want the melody to sit on top of the accompaniment. So as you're playing, make sure you're listening to yourself. You want the right hand to be audible. Make sure that the left hand is not covering up the right hand. So this is an example where the left hand is too loud. So you can imagine the fader knobs on a mixture. You're going to pull that left hand mix down and bring out that right hand so that we can hear very clearly the melody should be the dominant voice in this section. Building to here. Going away. And right there, once the melody drops out, your left hand has an opportunity to do that crescendo, taking us into the next melody section. Okay, so balance, make sure that you're listening to yourself as you play. Right hand melody should be louder than the left hand accompaniment. All right, and that's the first opening section. I hope you found this video helpful. What are some of the main musical or technical challenges that you're experiencing, whether you're a student or you're a teacher working with a student? What are some of the challenges you might be experiencing and what are some solutions or recommendations that you would make for this opening section? Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Subscribe for more videos like this and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.